Colt 45 and two zigzags, baby, that's all we need. Going to the park after dark, smoke that tumbleweed. Something, something, something. Let the marijuana burn. And then singing those dirty rap songs. Welcome back, guys. It's Clinched Up with me, Jesse Diaz. American, American Muay Thai Podcast. Everything and everything American Muay Thai. America. Right? Trying to grow this sport with my voice and doing uh, the best I very can by giving back to the community that I love. And so I had a very fun-filled weekend. Before we get to that, if you are here for William McCutcheon, McCutcheon, I hope that I'm saying that right. That's going to be the first interview, our first guest. That's going to be the end of my rant. So if you skip over, before you skip over and listen to William, follow me on Instagram at Jesse the Hassle Diaz. Uh, follow, like, subscribe to the YouTube account. It's called The Hassle of Hair. I put the clinched up on that. It's basically going to be changing to Diaz Productions. And uh, I have another podcast called The Hassle of Hair where I interview inspirational people. There is audio platforms, Apple, Spotify, all those podcast platforms clinched up is on. Subscribe on those two, guys. Leave a comment below if you guys love Muay Thai. Put the American Muay Thai flags. I love you guys. Thank you guys for everything. But back to it. So it's William McCutcheon and Bailey Rodriguez. This weekend, I was uh, honored to be a ref and judge at the PKB event point kick boxing actually point muay thai sparring i like to call it point muay thai sparring at uh madera in madera at the madera fairgrounds you guys madera fairgrounds in madera obviously god damn it dude get your shit together bro uh yeah sometimes i talk to myself to to get words out uh and yeah but no but madera madera martial arts put on the event Woo, got through that. Christopher, uh, uh, should look up his last name, but he held the event, the owner of Madera Martial Arts, asked me to be a judge and a, and a ref and to go out there to podcast. But judging and refing, that took up all my day. Wasn't able to podcast. And I actually forgot the cord too. So there's a cord, which is this one right here. I'm showing it on the video camera if you're listening to audio. I forgot this gray cord that connects my... Uh, basically my audio recording device if you guys don't know what a i just forgot what it was called too funny story i get there and there's this mean looking dude looks like a, a coach mma coach to be exact um but he was sitting where chris told me to uh have the booth and i was like hey bud i'm sorry uh, i'm gonna have to move you i'm gonna be having a booth here and he just looks at me so uh, you're just going to take my spot and just mad. I was like, Oh, and I'm a nice guy. Right. Like, unless I, I need to not be like, it's hard for me to be even mean to people, even people I don't like. I was like, Oh, I'm just, I'm setting up a booth here and they let me have this, this spot. And so he moved, he's all pissed off. You could just tell he's pissed and I could feel the, the, the him being mad. Like, do you ever feel like when somebody's mad, like, and they're right next to you, you just feel it, right? Especially when you're married, you could just feel your, your wife's uh, anger. I could feel it. I could feel the anger. And I'm just, I'm just setting up all my stuff. I have the table and, and I'm trying to do it fast as possible. So he sees I'm like doing, actually doing something. And I look in my backpack I'm looking, searching. I have everything out, the the mics, the computer. I had the table set up. I'm missing one cord. One fucking cord. God damn it, man. And so I put everything back, put everything away, went up to the guy. I told him, sorry about taking your spot. Sorry about uh, being an inconvenience. You could have your spot back. I'm not taking the spot anymore. I'm going to be judging. I said, sorry. And he said, no problem. Like he seemed like a nice guy afterwards, but it was just, uh, it was like, God damn it. 
So even though I wanted to podcast, I couldn't podcast because I forgot the cord. I probably wasn't going to be able to because I was refing and judging. All the other PKB events, my wife actually bought me a banner to have uh, in back of me. So any martial art thing, I want to start going to these, these, um, these, these events, right? Any martial art event, I want to go there right? and start having podcasts or just showing the name, right? I want to promote it. This whole podcast is to promote American Muay Thai. So I'm going to do the best I very can and, and, uh, yeah, give back. Refing was amazing. Refing was intense, was amazing. And judging was the same. Like, I just, it was insane that they paid me. Like the fact that you're getting paid to do that, it's amazing. Uh, it's because it's so fun. Like you don't even realize you're doing something because you're, you're having so much fun. You're watching fights and you're refing them. And I don't know if you guys, if you're a coach or you deal with the kids class and you're, you're managing sparring with new people, like that's a little bit different from refing. Like I was, I was thinking it was going to be like that where you're managing kids sparring, right? And you're just watching them, making sure they don't go too hard, man, this, even for the kids, it was intense. So I judged the first like four where I sat down and I actually did the scorecard and all that stuff. And that was okay. The The fights weren't too in, intimidating, right? They weren't too intense. And then it was my turn. We switched off. I, I had one guy named Noah and the other guy's name, I forgot it. It's my fault. Obviously, if you listen to a lot of my podcasts, I, I forget everything. Might be a problem. But I've been forgetting everything since before I started getting hit in the head. So it's not a brain issue. It's just, I don't know, maybe I just have a very bad uh, sense of uh, paying attention. They they were they were refing the first four, and then it was my turn. All their matches, pfft, I don't want to say they're cake, but they were just, uh, they, they weren't intense. The very first one I had was like all over the place. Every freaking like 10 seconds, they were off the mat and I'm trying to catch them. It, one thing you start to notice as like you're refing those things, why like having them having actual skill not being green, it makes it easier for you. When they're, when they're green, meaning when they're beginners, they're all over the place. You can't read them. You don't know where they're going. They're going forward. They're going backwards. They're falling backwards. They're like, they're going left, right? Like they're all over the place. You can't really dictate where they're going. Most of the time when they're green, it's just forward and backwards, never circling. So they're just going off the mat, just off the mat, off the mat, off the mat. And you're trying to get, prevent them from falling on the hardwood floor. And that's the hard part. But when you get people that are, are well-trained with technique they're they're circling circling they know like okay this is the edge of the mat i can't be there i don't want my back against the ropes which we don't have they didn't have ropes for this because it's a it's matches not fights and so they're circling which you should do right you should do you should get out you should start trying to get the center of the ring those are points if you're not owning the center of the ring you could score points by 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 owning the center of the ring, controlling the fight. So when it, when I had people that were green, those were the hard matches. Man, it, it's it was fun, but it was it was it gave me appreciation for all those people that just that ref and even though this was lower, like in a lower like uh, talent level, right? But you have an appreciation for people that do it, and that was cool. And I can't imagine, can you imagine refing a world championship fight? You have two guys that work their asses off. And the last thing you want to do is for your name to be remembered. As a ref, I'm saying. As a ref, you don't want that. Right? You want these two fighters that are world champions, have trained their whole entire life to get to this point, And you want to be least remembered. Because if you are remembered... Almost all the time, it's because of a bad, bad thing you did. And it's, it's sometimes, sometimes 
referees dictate a fight by accident. Stopping a fight early, not stopping it soon enough, um, not seeing an eye poke, not seeing a nut shot, not seeing the, sh the cheating. But it's, it, 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 it's, it, I think it's a, a tougher job than people say. Right. And this is coming from somebody that did uh, point Muay Thai sparring, refing. So it's, that was hard. I can't imagine doing those higher levels, but it was fun. The event was awesome. When I first started doing the, the matches, when I was, when I was doing them, they were smaller. They were smaller. They were like small wrestling tournaments. Like they weren't these big events, like these PKBs or point or the point Muay Thai sparring matches. They're getting bigger. Everybody wants to do them. Now all these gyms have seen these, even MMA gyms, kickboxing, just a uh, karate. Like they're all seeing these events and they're like, let's go to this. It is great for people that want to enter the world and not are not there yet to, capable to get into the ring. It's great for that. Right. And, um, but it, it's, it, they're getting bigger, getting f like more, more talent out there. And my team strike fitness, uh, we did good. Uh, from what I saw, I was judging and always in my off, my own spot because I was doing all that stuff, but we did good. I think it, and it's as you get more fighters, it gets chaotic. But it's it's uh, you know, it's it's patience. We'll grow. I I know we will. I have faith in our gym, and we'll grow. And we're gonna grow into something big. It's just patience. Takes time. Takes a lot of time. Takes a lot of effort. People don't get great in one day, or one year. It's just constant, constant, constant. I could see that. I could see it. I could see it five, ten years from now. I could see it. I'm because I'm not in this thing for tomorrow or today or or months from now. I'm in it thinking ten years from now. That's where my head's at. Being part of this gym strike. I'm seeing ten years from now. I'm seeing what it could be ten years from now, and we could be great. So all these moments that like. Even me losing, my sister losing, Nashi losing at the tournaments, not the, the point Muay Thai spar. I'm talking about the IKF Classic and the TBA. Like, yes, I'm, I was mad for losing, but I don't, I don't dwell on it so much because that's not the goal. Oh, that's my dog barking. But I don't dwell on it so much, right? Because I, I see 10 years from now. I see what we're going to be. Coach Amber has us on a, on a path. And the family around Strike, it's awesome. I love them. And we're going to be something great. And I'm still going to be doing this podcast. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the two adults that, that did it, that competed, Bailey Rodriguez, Bailey the Meat Rodriguez. Bailey has been in my corner one time. For an MMA fight. He got back there because he just showed up. And, he him and he just kept on bugging coach. I want to do it. I want to do it. And he's a little heavier. Coach didn't want him fighting heavyweight. Wanted him to drop weight. But he kept on doing it. And he dropped weight. But he was still a heavyweight. So he did have he did heavyweight. Holy shit. Like he did good. Like he whooped his ass. He He did good. That was good, man. That was good. I loved it. Loved seeing him compete. And then my boy Patrick. Um, if you guys, it, if you guys seen Muay Thai Attic, they just dropped their Patrick uh, Starfish shorts. He is the reason for those shorts. I'm just gonna put it out there now. He is the reason for those shorts. He had came up to me. I was coaching a class, and he got there early. And he said, what do you think about these shorts? He had came up with the idea. I was like, oh, those are sick. So he got custom shorts. If you guys ever go to Muay Thai Attic, they're able to do custom shorts for you. And um, he he dropped. He said, hey, can you do this for me? And he's like, oh, man, that's a good idea. So his idea, they ended up making them. And they posted them. People, a lot of good feedback. And now they're making them into, into shorts for everybody. So everybody's going to get them. So 
I just want to let the few people that are listening to this podcast that are Muay Thai fans, Patrick Zapian's the Patrick Zapian's the reason for those shorts. You know, so but he did great. He did great. The dude's been working his ass off, and he did great at his his uh, his match. I was refing another match, actually looking at both. Right, I was during in between rounds. I was looking at his, and then I was uh, I was like, man, I I want to stop and watch this, but I watched most of it. He did awesome, man. And sometimes it's just it's not like he got outclassed. It's not like he got beat up. Some days it's just not our day. Any other day, I think it goes his way. It, it, that's like a, it's just depending on the day who wins. It, it wasn't really outclassed. The dude did awesome. Hats off to you, Patrick, the guy that made those shorts. And, um, but yeah, so the event was awesome. And the Aussie Bulls were fucking amazing. I don't know who made those. So other than that, we, we got back. We went to my sister-in-law's uh, son's, my, my nephew's birthday party at, in Madeira, it was 115 degrees, guys. 115 degrees. I don't know if you get where you guys are from, but where you're from, but it was 115 degrees. It was fucking hot, and it's still hot. It was still hot the next day today, uh, on Sunday. But this comes out on Monday. I mean, yesterday. And it's been in the high hundreds. So me and my wife, I had. To, I'm doing this thing. I don't know if you guys see it. If you guys follow me on Instagram on Sundays, I go treasure hunt. Basically, I've been reading this book called Chasing the Thrill by Daniel Barbarisi. And I've been diving into the world of metal detecting and treasure hunting. Where I want to do it on Sundays. I want to do something other than Muay Thai with my wife and go hang out. You know, it's all about the gym. It's all gym, 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 gym. Strike fitness, strike fitness. Fighting, 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 fighting. You know, and when you're married, it, it's sometimes it could be healthy, sometimes it's not, and you need other things. So every Sunday, me and my wife, we, this is our second Sunday. We're gonna go and treasure hunt, mostly just hanging out, and mostly finding garbage. So I go to the San Luis Reservoir. San Luis Reservoir is man-made lake, and a lot of people go fishing. But the water is very low right now. I don't know because of a drought. I don't know what for. But it's very low right now. And I was thinking, you know what? I'm going to go there. I'm a metal detect. We'll hike down there. So we, there's a freeway right there. And we cut the freeway to go off where you could park in this little area and walk down instead of going all the way around. It's, and so if you're on the 152, if you're ever on the 152, me and my wife had parked right off of the 152 to go walk down. And the water used to be by the freeway. Now it's about two miles from the freeway. That's how low it's gotten. So me and my wife parked, parked outside. I parked uh, right outside the freeway. We walked all the way down to the water looking for stuff. I was had my bedroom detector looking for stuff. And I'm thinking treasure stuff that people dropped in the water for 40 years ago, 30 years ago, last week, whatever. I'm thinking I'm going to find stuff, you know, like rings and earrings, whatever, quarters, money. But what are you going to find at a place where people fish? Fishing shit. <laughs> I found I found a bunch of fishing weights for the line. God damn it. You know what I mean? Uh, it sucked. But I found my first quarter. Yee! Found my first quarter in 1977. And I I think the, the goal next week is to go to, um, we're going to go to the beach. It's going to be my first beach hunt and go look for stuff. But I love it, man. I, I love it. What do you, what do you guys do for, uh, on Sundays? Uh, not what do you guys do other than Muay Thai? If there's something you do, if there's, you're training all week, you're grinding hard, how do you turn it off? Or some people don't turn it off. Maybe they're healthy when it just doesn't turn off. You know, everybody's different. Not everybody's the same. And uh, yeah, what comment below what, what you guys do. But first, William McCutcheon. He's going to be our first interview of the day. Incredible story, guys. Uh, so he added me on Instagram, or I had I added him. I don't know, 
But I ended up seeing this dude. I was like, he is. I was like, who is this guy? Do I know? Because doing the podcast and doing all this stuff that I'm doing, I'm starting to get people. I have no idea who they are that are adding. And I, I, I accept everybody's ad. Like it's, I'm not really private. So whoever I'll follow anybody. I don't give a fuck. Like you guys, it, it's not about followers, all that stuff. I just add it. I'll add anybody on here. Right. It's about what you do in real life, you know, but, but I, I added him and I was like, who the hell is this? Cause I seen that he followed me and I was like, who the hell is this? And you look at his page and at the bottom at the first, at the top, his first like four pictures, shredded, has a, a world champion belt. I mean, a Muay Thai belt, not, uh, IKF classic belt on his his waist. And then and he's training Muay Thai. He's shredded. And then maybe like his fifth picture, ultimate dad, dad picture. And just, he's just a fat dad. There's no, there's no in between. It goes fat dad, shredded Muay Thai fighter. And there's no in between. I'm like, what the fuck? I was like, I need to know about this guy. So I hit him up. I go, what's this all about? And he goes, well, I lost 50 pounds and I started fighting. And I was like, all right, I got to have you on the podcast. You got to tell your story. So he tells his story and it, it's, it's interesting. So it's, it's, it's a really inspiring. I actually just ran right before I did this because he inspired me to go run and get my ass back to work. So, but he, he, good guy. And I was actually supposed to fight him at the IKF Classic. So we were actually supposed to fight. And I ended up not fighting because I didn't get, I got beat up the last fight and stuff happened, you know. But good guy, good story. That's what it's all about, guys. Muay Thai changing people's lives. It's, it's, not, it's not about the wins or the losses or all that stuff. It's about who you meet. You know, they say a lot of people are like it's lonely at the top. It, it fuck that shit, man. Like if you're lonely, <laughs> it, like yeah, that's a problem. You know, you need you need to have people around you to celebrate with, good people, people that you can trust. But it's not lonely. In anything you're doing, if it's lonely, then it's the wrong thing to be doing. Or you need to look at yourself and like, oh. But it's about who it's about who you meet, about all these great people through your journey. And it's it's awesome. But I had Bailey Rodriguez too, my teammate, my my uh a fan um uh my buddy of mine. He he was on the show. He's gonna be second interview. But he uh, um I gotta stop saying no. But he did an crazy an incredible job at the PKB. You guys follow these guys both on Instagram. And next week, I will be having a special guest. Pretty big guest, right? And I will start breaking down more, more fights. More fights. Oh, you guys, check this out before you guys go. This is, uh, I just posted this. And this is the most shared uh, video I've ever posted. But it's two old guys fighting uh, in a Muay Thai fight. Right. And they're going at it like it. So I'll put the whole video. I'll put the whole video link below, but they're going at it. Uh, where did I get it? But they're going at it and they're, they're like 70 years old. Right. And there's one point where they, they just start swinging and it's like, Everybody's like, oh, you're too old to fight. You're too old to fight. Not in Thailand. I'm pretty sure this is in Thailand. But one American guy, it's 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 called 67-year-old Muay Thai fighter Bill USA versus Liger, Italy. And I'm assuming the guy in the left is Bill from the United States. But they go fucking at it. In the last like 10 seconds, the most cardio they could do, you know, they're older, but it's an awesome fight. And I, I guess I, I'll be playing it. I'm pretty sure I'll put it on here on the, the B roll, right? Oh man. And in the first, like in the first seconds, they're, they're just going at it. 
right? And you could tell they're they're they start getting getting tired. But it might be like a a weird. I think it's like a promotion. I don't know because they didn't show the they didn't show a winner, so it might be something they're doing. I need to find more about this. You know, I I want to interview the USA guy, right? And see now you see they're tired. You know, at the, after the first the first um, first few seconds, and then now they're starting to slow down, start to pick each other apart. <laughs> But it's awesome to see, right? Who the fuck sanctioned this? This is fucking awesome. But if you guys watch the whole thing, there's there's at one minute and 30 seconds, they just start throwing blows at each other. Oh, Jesus. No one got hurt, but they didn't they didn't show the winner. It just got cut out. I think it was something promotional or something. I don't know. But um, the so remember there is triumphant twelve Eddie Abasolo versus Alex Bouvle. That is going to be July at the end of July. But you guys don't forget get your tickets in Modesto. A uh, Modesto, what the fuck in Mexico and. I'll be breaking that the week before the fight. I'll be breaking down that fight a week before the fight. It's going to be August 7th, 2021. August 7th, guys, not in July. The other one that's going to be in July is Lion Fight. Lion Fight 67. Carrara versus Vita Kavix. And then you have also Maraza Pallard versus Menko. So yeah, check it out. That's going to be in Sicily, Italy. And then you got two American uh, fighters on that card. Andy Nguyen and I believe um, Pollard is a, an American too. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a hold of these fighters. If you guys got uh, fighters that want to be interviewed, let them know. I'm here. I want to hear their story, how you found Muay Thai. If you, think, uh, tell, if you don't want to be on the podcast, you want to just comment below. And say how you found Muay Thai or why you love Muay Thai. Go ahead. I I'm, I appreciate it. You guys remember, add me on Instagram, Jesse the House of Diaz. Uh, add the YouTube, the House of Hair, shortly turning into Diaz Productions. And then, yeah, listen to all podcast platforms. We have this on all podcast platforms. Subscribe to them if you guys don't want to watch. And remember, promote Muay Thai. Add the, add the people that I, I had on. I love you guys. More to come. Enjoy the episode. Peace. Round one. Fight. William McCutcheon? McCutcheon, yeah. McCutcheon. Out of eight points in North Carolina. And uh, what, what city in North Carolina? Uh, the gym's in Winston-Salem. Winston-Salem. And yeah. I found... Uh, well, William, uh, we found each other on Instagram. And... I think I, I've been following him for about three weeks now through Muay Thai. And I went to his page, page recently and I was looking at your pictures and it goes from champion Muay Thai fighter to dad. Dad, like, dad, dad. Yeah, yeah, to fat dad. Like like 2018, I was like, I'm trying to figure out like there's no, <laughs> you don't show a progression. It's just like two different people. Uh, yeah, I was laughing my ass off earlier when you sent me the... Um the two pictures of me one one of me this week and then one from like a couple of years ago yeah, yeah so big difference what what's the story what happened like when did you find muay thai and then when did you start losing weight to fight so it was probably about three years ago um i work in construction i work for myself doing remodeling and um this is back when so i'm like six three and I weighed 250 then. And all I did was go to work, come home, sit on the couch and drink whiskey pretty much and watch TV. That's all I did. And um, I met two friends um, through church um, who really uh, changed my life, to be honest with you. And, and one of them, uh, uh, Robert, he's big into fitness. He got me, uh, he, you know, asked me to come work out with him one day. I went out and, uh, 
I was around this guy who had veins popping out all over his arms and his legs and he had trained Muay Thai some and, and he was just ripped. And we were out there at five in the morning with sandbags running through the woods, doing burpees, uh, low crawling and, um, something about the toughness of meeting someone like that who does something like that on a daily basis really made me want to, um, fix up my life a little bit. And in that same week, um, my friend David called me and said, Hey man, I'm going to go try out this Muay Thai class. I was like, are you down? And I'd like just set my drink down. And I was like, yeah, man, I'll come Muay Thai. Uh, the only thing I knew about Muay Thai was like, uh, the movie blood sport. Have you seen blood sport? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the one guy who gets like the crap beat out of him. Yeah, I think typo, typo or I forgot his name. Yeah. I don't yeah. remember, but, um, yeah, that's all I knew Muay Thai was. And so I showed up, man, didn't know what I was doing or where I was. And uh, met a guy named Chris Claude Felter. He owns the gym there. Um, he has been a uh, U.S. Muay Thai uh, champion. Um, he was he was he won the title um, back when he was fighting. He had he's been on the um, what's the UFC reality show uh, Ultimate Fighter. Ultimate Fighter. What was, his, what was his name so I could look him up later? Yeah, Chris Claude Felter. It's C L O D F E L T E R. One more time, sorry. C L O yeah, D. D as in David. Yes. And then F as in Fox. E L T E R. Claude Felter. Okay. Chris Chris Claude Felter. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, he was one of the the first uh, guys to fight Muay Thai in Madison Square Garden with um, a guy named Brett Holovacek from New York. And uh, Chris has been dedicated to Muay Thai for, for a long time. Um, he's a great coach. And so I started training there for two or three years, and they had a fight team there. I saw a bunch of really bad-looking dudes um, <laughs> that were, like, up in the ring, you know, training and um were you still 260 pounds or 250 pounds at the time yeah i was i was was pretty pretty fat like i was just poor diet poor everything um wasn't really like in a good mental place or anything i was just kind of uh not really taking care of myself but so basically I, i found out that um after training there for about a year and a half that i really wanted to give it a shot being on the fight team and uh, when you start running and you start having to get in shape to do something that you really want to do, you just have no choice but to lose weight. You, you'll find a way to um, change your diet and do the things you need to do to to achieve the goals you want to achieve. So um, I found out very quickly that I did not want to be fighting against the guys that were 220 and up. <laughs> so I... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it started like drastically losing weight. I was running. Um, I was rucking. I don't know if you ever heard of rucking, but just having a big heavy pack on my back. Yeah. And I was doing like tons of miles with that. Um, I was buying military workout programs online doing that. And um, long story short, I, I trained there for, for about two years. Two years of really hard work on and off over and over again. Um, and so we just had my first four fights, um, which was last week and a couple months before that, I think back in March. So you did uh, the TBAs and then you did, I believe the, the IFMA, uh, tournament. I didn't do the TBA, but we were, we were talking about that and we want to, we want to do that in the future. But what the first tournament I'd done was, um, the, uh, it's by AK Promotions, the IKF East Coast Classic. Okay, got it. Back, back in Myrtle Beach. And then I just did the World's IKF World's Classic in uh, Orlando, Florida. Yeah, my my uh, my sister just fought on that card. I saw her there. Yeah, yeah I, saw, right. I saw your uh, – yeah, I, I found you because I, I looked you up. I saw you were on my um, – you were originally supposed to fight in, in that tournament, right? Uh, yes, yes, and then yeah, I, yeah. So, I got beat up at the the TBAs and didn't get cleared to fight for that tournament. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, but I I looked you up on, and that's how I found you on Instagram. Um, and then I I saw I saw your coach at the uh, IKF Worlds Classic, and did you um, say hi to her? Oh yeah, yeah. I think okay, she, she came yeah, up she to me. me. <laughs> 
Yeah, she, she, came, she came. Sorry, sorry. She came no, up no. to me. She came up to me and uh, like the day after she got back, she's like, "Yeah, this tall, tattooed beard guy, came, bearded guy, came up to me and said that he knew you." And I was like, "Uh, there's a lot, lot of those guys that I know." And then I had thought it was somebody else, but I didn't know it was you. That's awesome. No, man. no. I just, I was just like, uh, I, I knew it was your coach because I seen a picture of you on your Instagram with her. So I just said, "How's Jesse doing?" And uh, she's like, "He's good." I was like, cool. And that was it. So yeah, she's, I, she's pretty I wasn't, sure why, I wasn't sure why you weren't there fighting, but um, I had to fight the uh, first guy, and then uh, I fought the guy you were originally supposed to fight second. So, oh, so you didn't it, get the buy. You had to fight two times, and you won. That's awesome, yeah, fought, man. Yeah, twice. I mean, it was good. It was, it was a good experience, good tournament. I uh, hate you missed on it, missed out on it. but Yeah, uh, I'll be back. Got to take care of yourself. <laughs> um so how was it the first time you fought like how was it uh you went you went through all this training did you have any any athletic uh background like in high school yeah yeah, yeah. so i mean um so i actually did karate for like 15 years ever since i was a kid all through high school um and, and you know karate um definitely helped some with muay thai but they're two very different things you learn a lot of bad habits in karate that you need to break when you start Muay Thai and vice versa but so I'd done that I'd, I'd, I'd um, played basketball um, I'd ran I used to be super athletic and um, when I when I started construction I, I got addicted to drinking and um, eating, eating fast food every single day my my life just changed a lot I stopped doing anything athletic and I pretty much uh, pretty much just was in a slump going home every day, just drinking and working. And that was it. And, and, uh, arguing with my wife every night. So, <laughs> um, I, I ventured that, that all changed one man, when I found an outlet, uh, like Muay Thai. Yeah. And what do you think it is? Because I went through the same thing, um, going, working full time. I got married, working full time, having the kid and, and just, you, you kind of lose sight of yourself. Like, it's uh because now i i'm assuming you still work construction i do yeah it's my full-time job and it makes yeah. things so much easier right being in shape and and keeping yourself healthy oh yeah i mean it's i wouldn't trade it for anything I'll, I'll never go back to the way i was before that's awesome man that's a that's a pretty incredible story is your is your plans to go pro and fight pro muay thai i would love to work towards um a couple professional fights it, it's not something i want to chase after um i don't i don't want to be like a, a full-time fighter yeah um uh, i just don't i just don't think that's going to work for my myself and my family our dynamics but you know i think there's uh, back to what you were saying about you went through the same thing um with with your life i think that as men we are looking for some sort of approval um, or a rite of passage is what someone else said to me once in our society. And I think that's something we're missing in our society is a rite of passage when you become a man. And I think sometimes you miss out on that growing up and you kind of just kind of fall into the rhythm that society's laid out for you of working and going home and being a dad. And, and uh, being a dad is the most wonderful thing I've ever experienced in my life. I mean, my two kids are just the best things I've ever done. But at the same time, I was still looking for something to make me feel fulfilled and some, some, some sort of approved, some way for me to feel approved and sitting at home getting fat was not, did not make me feel good about myself. I had to find some, something, um, to, to feel good at. So, you know, when I started training and stuff and, and you start becoming this guy who's fighting all the time, people start to look up to you, which is kind of cool but at the same time you know they just look up to you because you're fighting and you might have experienced the same thing i think you said that you're coaching now at your gym yes um and stuff yeah so i i listened to your podcast yesterday on the way back from the orlando um awesome. but um yeah man like when you when you start getting your life turned around you you start um people will notice people will follow you people will start admiring you and, and for the right reasons but it's a good feeling when you can turn your life around and help other people turn their life around as well by setting an example. 
Um, so at, we know when I, when I changed, lost this weight and started fighting like eight guys from our church all joined eight points in like <laughs> one week. So the pastor's there working out now. And, um, I mean, it's a cool feeling to, to set an example and sort of lead, but, um, yeah, I just think that as men, we're looking for something to challenge ourselves and to feel like we've accomplished a goal. So, uh, I mean, there's nothing like accomplishing a fight goal. It's awesome, man. When you train for two months and you go in there and you smash those guys, it feels awesome. It feels good. <laughs> That's awesome to hear. Yeah. And yeah. I, I always ask the same question. You kind of touched on it already, but uh, how, how has Muay Thai changed your life? Um, you know, I don't know if, um, I don't know if Muay Thai has changed my life in itself, but the people that work in Muay Thai that I've met has changed my life. Chris Claudefelter has changed my life for the better. Um, he's just a good guy, man. He is one of a kind. He's one of the few guys on earth I've ever met that I've really loved, come to love, um, as a brother. Um, he's poured into me so much and done things for me that he hasn't had to do. Um, you know, you know, it's an honor when your coach flies across the country with you and corners you for no other reason than they want to invest in you and they want you to achieve. I mean, that's, that's a big deal to me. And I'm sure it is to you as well when you fought and your coach comes with you to corner you and, you know, you guys aren't making any money. I mean, you're paying money to go there and do this. You know? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so when I, when I, I asked Chris, I said, why are you doing this? Why are you coming with us? I mean, I was like, why are you going to corner us or what do you get out of it? And he was just like, cause you guys are my champions, man. You guys are what I've been building here. I want to see you guys succeed and achieve your goals. And that's why I'm going. Cause I want to see you guys succeed. And that was it. So um, when you, when I went to the gym and started training and Chris started investing in me and then I saw myself change, um, Chris, you know, changed my life for the better, for sure. Um, and, uh, I will say Muay Thai has made me a little tougher, um, in, in a, in a mental way. Um, some of the things you learn, you learn not to get bullied in the sport. You got to learn that when you're fighting, you got to be the bully. And uh, you don't take you don't take a kick without giving a kick back. You don't take a strike without elbowing back, et cetera. So, I mean, I've met some really tough guys at the gym that have made me uh, made me look at my life and want to change a few things, tweak it, <laughs> tweak the way I, I uh, yeah, tweak my attitude. So, I mean, Muay Thai has been great, man. It, it's made me tough. I want my I want my sons to do it. It's been really good, man. Hell yeah, and and. Yeah. Will, Will, what's next for you? Um, I think we're going to do another tournament, uh, IKF. Um, I think it's the Fall Classic with AK Promotions in, I think, Myrtle Beach, maybe in October. I think it's October 9th. Um, but that'll be the next tournament we do, another amateur tournament. Um, but I'd like to uh, do a few more amateur fights and really get tested. And then, um, you know, I've always told – my, my friends at the gym that I, I want to do my goal is to have a, a real fight in thailand i want to be fighting in a muddy ring <laughs> in some rural town in thailand and i want yeah. my shit all bloodied up and i want to fight for like 100 baht or something that's what i want to do <laughs> i want a real muay thai fight that's uh, that's, uh yeah. that's the words of a of a real fighter right because like yeah in the in the, in the end of it we don't do it for money or, or anything, especially no. amateurs. <laughs> like we do, yeah, we're, we're just doing yeah. it to challenge ourselves. And we're like spending money to go do this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, do you have done all this, you know, and it, it, it has inspired me just hearing your story right now. Like uh, right after this, I'm going to go run. I need to get Dude, my, myself awesome. back, in, back into shape. So I got to go run it. right now. But, awesome, but, um, man. But where can people find you on Instagram and, and the, the stage is yours for the a few minutes and go ahead and say whoever you want to plug, whatever you want to plug for yourself. Your, the stage is yours. Oh, cool, man. Well, uh, my Instagram is uh, will underscore RMCC, W-I-L-L -L underscore RMCC. Um, the gym is eight points Muay Thai and fitness in uh, North Carolina. And um, 
I think Muay Thai is great, man. I, I wish it was a more popular sport in our country, to be honest with you, man. I think it's just the most exciting thing to watch. I, I, uh, I love it. It's, um, it's been really good for me and it's great to uh, get to have met you. Um, uh, I told my wife, I was glad we didn't have to fight because I feel like we could be buddies. If, uh, <laughs> we lived a little closer. You we, know? we could still fight and be buddies. It's all right. All right. Man. <laughs> all right that's cool. Um, yeah just hard to fight your friends you know yeah but, uh, but yeah man it's it's uh, it's been a pleasure it's the first podcast i've ever been on it's been a good experience so i hope your uh, i hope your channel keeps growing yeah hopefully and you got to share your story more for the people that are not in north carolina because that just seeing you go from one to one <laughs> from just dad to to incredible muay thai fighter it's a it's a it's cool but i want to see what happened man like like the grind you know so the grind okay yeah. well man it's uh dude it took a lot of um i don't know what it man something snapped it's something broke in me where it was just like i am not going to be this person anymore and no matter how much i don't want to work out i'm going to go do it there were so many mornings of getting up at 4 30 a.m and listening to guys like jocko willink i don't know if you know who that is <laughs> yeah yeah that, i know that. that navy seal maniac who gets up in the middle of the night and works out and like i just had to do it man i, I would be out in the garage for hours lifting sandbags and and doing push-ups and sit-ups and pull-ups and i mean i would it took time away from my kids time away from my wife um to get to change everything of my habits i mean it was like the whole family went from eating chick-fil-a together to the whole family eating chick-fil-a and me sitting back like no i've already had a protein shake you know like i was the yeah. guy no one wanted to hang out with anymore because mm -hmm. i my whole wife's family thought saw me losing weight and you know, they didn't really understand it at first. So it takes um, people thinking you're having a midlife crisis to people thinking you're just weird. Um, people thought that like I was losing weight to have an affair on my wife. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, it's it, it, it looking back, I'm glad that I made such a drastic change. And I'm, obviously people thought those things because because I was making progress. But um, yeah, man, people will think you're crazy when you start trying to change yourself because they're just not they're not used to seeing such a radical change i think um when my in-laws heard that i was muay thai fighting they thought i was like backyard brawling at some mma yeah. you know like chain link fence like body slamming guys for beer or something <laughs> you know, they, had, they, they had no idea what muay thai was so um yeah man it, it i just I, I i i'm all about changing yourself and it's not easy but man, it's totally worth it when the, when the hard work's done, man, you get to, you get to look back and say, I'm proud of myself, you know, putting in the work. So it's a good Fuck feeling. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for doing this, Will. And I, I appreciate right. it. Everybody go check him out on Instagram and hopefully one day I could get to North Carolina and train with you guys. Dude, I would love to have you, bro. We'll run afterwards as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Final round fight. Did you hear that? Yeah. All right, guys, I'm here with Bailey Rodriguez, a PKB heavyweight contender. The winner, dude, the winner. <laughs> Fighting out of Strike Fitness out of Los Banos, California. Bailey is new to the Muay Thai game, and uh, he fought, I how much? It was just super heavyweight, right? It wasn't heavyweight? No, it's heavyweight because below it's light heavyweight. Okay, so it was heavyweight, and Bailey fought another big guy, and uh, I've been training Bailey a little bit here and there uh and i'm not gonna lie i was like seeing what bailey was gonna do when he gets in there and what happened bailey how'd you like it it was good dude like i, and I was ner nervous at the beginning you know and then uh i was trying to feel feel the pace out you know because i was watching guys before me and they're all that adrenaline was you know adrenaline dumps and people were gassing out and, and i just knew in my head i was like i was like, well, if i gas out I was like, i'm getting nothing but fucking shit you know but <laughs> i just didn't i didn't know you know how hard he was going to hit or how hard I was supposed to hit. But then uh, I was just taking the count like, well, I might as well be the first one for them to tell them, tell me to calm down, you know, yeah, you hit, hit them first and then, then get told. And, and are you, are you calling out all the heavyweights in the PKD PKB division point kickboxing sparring? Are we, call, who are we calling all, out? Bro. All of them all? Everyone, dude. All of them? I said all of them all. Everyone. All, all of them. And what's your background? What, what'd you do before Muay Thai? Uh, 
in high school, you know, it was football, wrestling, track. So, you know, we did a lot, a lot of wrestling. Uh, football was, you know, high level competition. Wrestling was obviously a high level competition. You know, we went to Idaho, um, Nevada, all that stuff. Track, you know, just a lot of cardio. So, you know, this, this athletic stuff's not new to me, you know, <laughs> but we're, we're getting, we're getting back into it. And Bailey goes into strike fitness uh, all the time saying he's the most ad- athletic person there. And yeah, uh, you guys all doubted me. Doubted me. <laughs> I proved you wrong. You didn't prove me wrong. I knew that you were gonna do work. It was a matter of like if you were gonna gas out. Uh, I mean, didn't, dude. You, you work twelve hours a day. Is that correct? Yep, twelve hour days. Um, an hour and a half driving to work. Hour and a half driving back. You know, I still get my workouts in. Go home. You know, got to do the family stuff still, and I still get it done, dude. And you, you keep on mentioning that you want to be part of the first MMA blackout MMA event in Los Banos, California, right? No, I'm telling you, I'm gonna be ready for that. That that's gonna be. I got two months for that, right? That I, I put on a little clinic right there. You know <laughs> of what could happen? You give me two more months, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show LB what, what's up. You know, because I'm not gonna look stupid in front of my hometown. Are we Are we trying to fight heavyweight, or what are we trying to fight at? I, I like heavyweight right now just because um, you, you, about about three, you got about three months. Yeah, you, you don't have to worry about weight. You know what I mean? Definitely, I'm going to get a lot lighter, you know, to move a lot faster on the mat. And uh, I want to work on my head movement more, you know, but. And keeping I'm your hands. Bring, I'm trying to bring the speed, you know. Keeping and, your hands everyone, up, maybe? Yeah. Don't worry. That, that comes with the head movement. And. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it, dude. We, okay. we got that. that that's handled. But uh, I want to bring the speed and all that to heavyweights. When you know people watch heavyweights, it's like two fucking like other they said with us, you know, two grizzlies fighting. And uh, you know, I'm trying to bring that speed there. And then, you know, this kind of kind of how I did in wrestling. You know, the big guys were slow, so you just got to be faster than them. And then you don't got to hit as hard. You know, as long as you tap them more than they tap you, and take less damage. That's that's the goal is not take any damage. And I, I didn't take any yesterday. Um. D- how about like how how did it feel like getting to that that video I sent you of you getting the teeped? Teep? Yeah, the teep. How scared Listen, were you? No, I was off balance. Like it didn't hurt. You know what I mean? It was yeah. more like I was just off balance. And you know, and I mean, everyone knows in the gym, it's hard as hell to take me down. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I, I could take I could take teeps. I could take all that kicks, whatever. You guys throwing it all at me, and. uh no, he, I mean, he, he definitely got it at the right time when I was off balance. And, you know, congrats to him for that. Got, you know, but, but I had to make up for it. And I think I did. I'm not going to lie. When you got teeped, like it was in slow motion. And I got scared because you went off the mat and you're falling on the, the, I don't know, what was it? Was it basketball court? I'd say like hardwood floor. Yeah, hardwood floor. And so are you going to be doing the PKB? And I believe they're having one in Tracy, California on August, right? Uh, I haven't talked to coach yet. I don't know what she wants me to do and all that, but um, I'm going to take, you know, two days, you know, my, my legs a little fucking sore. Um, take two days to rest that up and then get back in there and assess what I need to work on and go from that. Now, are you looking for a manager, or any type of management, any talent, talent management? Thing, yeah. Thing yeah, you need? yeah. M- McGregor entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> okay, me so- and my boy Connor. <laughs> McGregor Entertainment. Hit up Bailey Rodriguez on Instagram. Um, so you also uh, barbecue, right? On the on the side yeah. competitively. Yeah, that, that's a that's a work in progress right now. Let's just say you're better at fighting than barbecuing because you you whoa, you whoa, won whoa, that. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa buddy. <laughs> no, we had some hiccups. You know, I, I just got to pick what I want to put all my time into. You know, and I got I got my hands in different cookie pots right now, so. I need to start uh, dialing that down and focusing on one or two things instead of 10 things. Yeah. And, and so how I asked everybody this, I, I, I know you're very uh, new to Muay Thai, but uh, how has Muay Thai changed your life? I mean, it, it, it re- reignited that, uh, that spark, you know what I mean? Cause I was going to a, you know, a regular like in shape and all that before going, going to strike. And, uh, I didn't have that, that motivation to, you know, to, to push yourself like that. And as soon as you go, you know, into a, a Muay, Muay Thai gym or, or any MMA gym, whatever you want to say, um, 
it changes it changes uh you know your fire and you everyone's got something that you know they want to fight for and you know when i when i started training with coach amber you know i was like I, I only worked out for 30 minutes and it was like the hardest fucking workout i did in my life and it brought back that that team mentality of you know from high school and then you know it's harder harder to build with with, with everyone instead of build by yourself oh yeah and you know it- Bailey Bailey has been there at my fights uh, in the locker room. We snuck him in the the back of the locker room one time, and uh, Bailey's one of those people I keep on wanting to get motivated and keep on uh, keep him in the gym. There's certain people that you just no matter how far they leave the gym, you just want them to be in the gym. So Bailey doing this PKB was was fucking awesome, and and being able to judge it too. I, I'm I'm not gonna say I pulled some strings and maybe oh, handed, here, we, here we go here we go and, and maybe strings, huh? and I winked at the, the the referee to call it early and maybe <laughs> yeah. did that no I'm just kidding no you did you did an awesome job Bailey um where can where can people find you on Instagram uh my my personal page is Bailey Rodriguez twenty one and then the uh, barbecue page is Rough Riders Barbecue which there's a link to that in my my personal page as well. Are we going to start it, picking that up again? Yeah. Um, if, if you guys want barbecue done, you know, I need, I need at least, you know, a minimum of you know three weeks. Uh, I know a lot of times when I, when I support it out there, a lot of people hit me up for the week of, and it's hard to, you know, with, with work and everything, get everything all together in that short of time. But, uh, you know, if you give us, give us some time to work on your guys' event and then, uh, we should be able to handle it. We have an event coming up too, right? Are we still good for the, the, I think the third week of August? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we're we're gonna uh, team up and we're gonna make plates for uh, for people. So if you guys want one, you'll be supporting the Strike Fitness team, and all that money's gonna go to the Strike Fitness team and uh, Bailey too for his uh, fighting fighting career. If he's doing that because he doesn't have a talent manager right now, he needs a talent manager for his next fight. He will be at the PKB and Tracy. If anybody any heavyweight wants it, you could get it. He's ready to fight any heavyweight out there, even any light heavyweight to get him down in weight, maybe. But uh, thank you for doing this, Bailey. Any last words for the audience? You know, support the hassle here. He's doing he's doing something great for the the fighting community. This um, is clinched. People... This is clinched up, Bailey. This is clinched up. So hassle yeah, here. You're, you're, <laughs> you're both of them, dude. You're both of them. You know, <laughs> I'm going I'm going to the mothership. Yeah. But uh, um, you know, support Jesse and everything he does. You know, he does a lot of things uh, behind the scenes and a lot of things for the. MMA Muay Thai community that uh, a lot of people don't see and uh you guys you guys are putting people on the map so you know we appreciate you too hell yeah Bailey I, I love you man uh, uh, you. Uh, oh this shit just got weird bro <laughs> 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 all right all right Bailey I'll talk to you later and thank you for doing this man all right peace out